Hey guys, Ivan here. So this video we're gonna start with a little physique update of Regan Grimes. This is him right now at almost 300 freaking pounds. He's 290 right now at 24 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. And yes, in case you're wondering, as you can see here in the description, Milo Sarger is still coaching him. At this weight, he still looks pretty hard. I mean, the conditioning is looking good. He didn't get fat, right? 290 and not fat, still very lean. The abs are still visible. You can still see some vascularity. Uh, his conditioning is good, right? You can still see some cuts. This is not sloppy 290 pounds. This is good 290 pounds. I'm sure he gained a lot of water in the process. When he starts dieting, it's gonna go away, but... Still, he looks pretty good, like pretty neat, pretty tidy. I mean, this looks like a good proper off-season. He gained weight, he did not get too chubby, he still looks big and full and round. Do you guys remember the time when he went to Kuwait? Those guys were pushing him to be as heavy, as big as possible. I think he was at around 300 pounds, but as you can see right here, it wasn't as neat. You know, he was very full and he was big, he was huge, but you can still see that he was a little bit fat, a little bit chubby. You can see it in the stomach, you can see it basically everywhere. He was not as, as, as hard as he is right now in the offseason. And he was very uncomfortable doing this. He spoke about this openly afterwards. He said that they were basically not letting him go home and that they, uh, that they pushed him so hard. He was so uncomfortable. He didn't like the process at all. He was just eating, 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 training, training, training. And it worked. You know, he got big, but he didn't like the process. Now he's working with Milos Sharchev. And Milos is also known for pushing people beyond their limits. I've experienced this myself, actually. I was coached by Milos for three months, and that was the three toughest months in the bodybuilding off-season ever. I mean, I was eating so much, I was doing so many crazy protocols, it was insane. And uh, if, if Milos is doing the same approach with Regan, then props to Regan for enduring all this, because I know it was really tough, you really need to be super, super focused, you need to be able to be uncomfortable all the time, to, to stuff your mouth with food when you are super full. And you know what? It works. It works well, especially if you are somebody like Regan, who has like a fast metabolism, but has a huge frame. You guys know that Regan is not short, he's like six foot tall. So he needs to be really, really massive to fill out that frame. He needs a lot more tissue to add to be competitive against the top open pros. As you guys know, he was beaten by Sean Clarida, who is like 180. And Regan is probably like 250 to 60 on stage. And also this was Regan's best ever. But as you can see right here, the reason why Sean beat him is simply because his frame is more filled out. You know, he has more tissue on his frame. His frame is, of course, much smaller than Regan's, but once Regan manages, if ever, if ever he manages to add enough tissue on his frame, let's just say if he adds as much as Sean Clarita added to his frame, then that would be a sick package. And who's gonna help him do that faster than uh, Milos Archer? I mean, you hire Milos Charger when you want to get as big as possible, as fast as possible, and that's what Regan needs to do, you know, he has been stagnating for a couple of years, I mean, not stagnating, he made some progress, but not enough, you know, not enough, for his large frame to be like a serious top contender, he needs to grow at a little bit faster rate, I mean, look at Nick Walker, how much he grew, and he is one year younger than Regan Grimes. And he got up to top 5 at the Mr. Olympia, he could have been probably higher if he was at his best at that show. Let's not talk about that. But what I'm saying is Regan has all the potential, he has all the tools to be in that top, top tier of bodybuilding. Now the question is, is he gonna get there in a couple of years, in 5 years, in 15 years? It's up to him, I think. I think it's all up to him. How much he is willing to push his body. And right now, by choosing to be coached by Milos, and uh, based on these results also, looking, looking at these photos, it looks like he is making progress. And he has 24 weeks left until the Mr. Olympia, and if his body fat percent stays at this level, he can probably prep for 12 weeks, and he can grow for another 12 weeks. So I am expecting Regan to make some serious progress this year. What do you guys think? Do you see progress here? And do you think he's going to look that much different at the Mr. Olympia? And will he place higher this year? When I say higher, top 10? Top 10 would be a great result. Top 8? Well, that's a little bit too much, but top 10 would be amazing. Do you think he can do it?
If you guys don't sleep perfectly, I would definitely suggest you to start supplementing with Vintage Bliss. I mean, you guys must know that sleep is very, very important for progress. If you don't sleep right, you're not gonna have a great appetite, you're not gonna train as hard as you would if you were properly rested, and you're not gonna feel good all day long. Also, your muscles won't grow as fast if you're not resting enough, if you're not sleeping especially. So if your sleep is not perfect, you can try Vintage Bliss. You can click on the link in the description of this video and you can use the code EVAN for a 12% discount. All right, next we have a physique update of this 51-year-old Kamal El Gargni, your former 212 Mr. Olympia champion. It is insane what this guy is looking like right now at 50 freaking 1. It's ridiculous. As Chris Asito says here, best 51-year-old on the planet. I mean, forget about the age. I was just talking about Sean Clarida, and I think Sean is gonna probably win the Mr. Olympia 212 this year. I don't think Derek is gonna do it again. If Derek somehow squeezes into the 212 and brings the same conditioning like last year, yeah, Derek is probably gonna win it, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I think it's gonna be between Sean Clarida and most likely this guy right here. So two former 212 Mr. Olympia champions are gonna collide, and who's gonna win? Whew, I was really confident that Sean Clarida is gonna do it, but now looking at Kamal here, he looks really good. I mean, look at that back. It reminds me a little bit of Samir Banut's back, one of the best backs ever. I mean, the shape and the thickness of the lower lats, and also the way he's posing, the way he's posing with his legs too, right? Maybe he's trying to duplicate a Samir here. And this most muscular as well looks very, very impressive. I mean, the thickness in the chest and the delts and also the midsection. He might have a little bit wider waist, but, you know, it still looks good. It still looks very good. Uh, I, I listened to Nick Walker, who was training with Kamal for a while, and he said that Kamal is a really high-volume trainer and that he was burying Nick Walker with volume. I don't think he's uh, stronger than Nick, but Nick says that he's training like a maniac, and that's why he looks like this. So, what do you guys think? Do you think this 51-year-old former 212 Mr. Olympia champion has a legit chance at the 212 title again? Whatever you think, tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, next we have an update of Florian Poyerson. Do you guys remember this guy? Let me refresh your memory. Yeah, this was him. He was a very good open pro. I don't think he ever won a pro show, but he was very close to winning a couple of those. I think he was top three in a couple of shows, you guys can remind me. But now, he downsized and he's doing a classic physique. How well will he do in classic physique? I think he will do pretty well. I think he has a really classic physique, he really has nice lines. And his waist isn't really blown out from doing open, from force feeding, from, I don't know, heavy training, everything combined. It usually happens to open guys, but it didn't happen to him. His waist stayed pretty small. Could it be smaller? Sure. But is it small? Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if this is the kind of bodybuilder that really had to struggle, to suffer, to force everything with gear, with uh, eating, with training, to grow enough for the open, or he is the opposite, he is the kind of guy that just grows easily. I mean, relatively easily. Did he try hard to downsize? Maybe his body wanted to stay big and he had trouble downsizing, but he really wanted to because he would do well in classic physique or his body doesn't want to be as big as it needs to be for the open and it fits better in classic physique, so he downsized for that. I'm not sure, but he looks pretty good here and I'm curious to see him on stage to see how well will he actually do. Uh, as you can see, he has 10, 11 more pounds to lose. This uh, photo, this update was posted by his coach, Patrick Tour. Somebody asked the question how many kilos he has to lose and Patrick replied with uh, 10 to 11 pounds, which is not a lot. And this looks more realistic to be a classic physique competitor than uh, Horse MD, than Marcelo Diagelis. We were looking at that guy, we were like, how the hell is he gonna make the weight? And he didn't make the weight, even though he was hospitalized. So that guy was not small enough for classic physique. This guy, however, looks very big. Looks very round, especially on that side chest, but, you know, looks small enough to be a classic physique guy, I can imagine that. So, in 10 to 11 pounds, he will lose uh, all the body fat that is left, and he's going to be conditioned and ready, and I'm not sure which show he's gonna do, but he's gonna do a classic physique this time around, and I'm sure he's gonna do well. What do you guys think? Do you think he has potential to qualify for the Mr. Olympia? Well, maybe qualifying is not that hard, because there are like 50 guys right now doing the Olympia, but can he be like top 10, top 20 at the Olympia? 
whatever you guys think down in the comment section down below. Do you guys remember this classy physique guy? He was, I think, fourth or fifth at the Mr. Olympia a couple of years ago, and since then he didn't show up anywhere. Now he's currently waiting for the visa. Uh, he wants to compete in Canada in Vancouver Pro. He is from China and he has been waiting for that visa for a while. He still didn't get it. And, you know, it's very stressful to prep when you don't know if you're going to be even able to travel and to compete. And if he does compete, I mean, he will probably win that show because uh, there isn't really that many top, top classic physique competitors doing those shows. Uh, most of them are already qualified and he was top five at the Mr. Olympia. So uh, look at this guy also. He looks amazing. Uh, his weakness, I would say, was the imbalance. Uh, his upper body was too small for his legs. Or you can put it as his legs were too big for his upper body. He did not do anything to change that. He stayed pretty much the same, balance-wise. He probably improved his upper body and his lower body too, but he probably should have laid off leg training for a while, because this is classic physique. Balance is very important. Symmetry matters a lot. In open bodybuilding, you could have crazy legs and smaller upper body, but, you know, in classic physique, mm, if your body doesn't flow that well, if, you're, if your upper body is not matching your legs, it's gonna be a problem, for sure. There are two ways to fix this. One would be to lay off training legs for a while and let your body catch up. And the other would be train your upper body harder. <laughs> I don't know how much sense does that make. Can his upper body grow faster than it already is growing? I don't know. Here you can see the comparison between him and Chris Bumstead. And as you can see, Chris probably has even bigger legs. But his upper body is matching those legs. Chan Kang, not so much. In any case, I still think he's going to win Vancouver Pro or whichever show he does and he will get to the Mr. Olympia. What he's gonna do up there? Is he gonna be top 5 again? Most likely. I think he does have a crazy looking classic physique, uh, very, very well shaped, you know, very, very beautiful kind of physique. And I'm really excited to see him back. I hope he will get that visa or if not, he's gonna do another pro show, qualify for the Mr. Olympia and get up there again and maybe do better than the last time. We'll see. Next, we're gonna talk about Harry Chopin a little bit more. So you guys probably know all the drama that happened, uh, him parting ways with his managers and them saying that he's uh, using Sintol and they kept going after him. It's crazy. I mean, this guy, I think he was blocked from Instagram because he posted so many stories about this. And this one I found very interesting. It's a chat with uh, Honey Rambot. As you can see, this was probably a group chat and Honey Rambot told uh, his team Team, please tell Hari to stop injecting his shoulders. His right shoulder looks very swollen and bad. The judges will mark him down. Uh, I have said this so many times, don't inject the shoulders. Hari Chupan said something, I don't know what, uh, it was probably in, in Farsi. Anyways, the thing is here, nobody said anything about Sintel. Uh, what, what Hari said was just stop injecting. You know, in shoulders. And a lot of bodybuilders are injecting gear in their shoulders. It's a very common uh, injection site. For some people, it looks better than the others. I think it depends on what kind of needles you're using. If the needles you're using are long enough and you can inject deep and you're not injecting crazy amounts at, at once, you should probably be fine. But if you're using those small dentist needles and you're using a, a lot of oil, it will show. It will show. But nobody said anything about Sintel here. Also, we have an update of Hari Chopin, just him doing some chest and posing a little bit. And he says something, I don't know what he says, he could be addressing this whole situation. If you guys understand what he's saying, uh, you can watch this video on his IG and tell me what he says. But uh, what I'm more curious is what he looks like right now. At 24 weeks out of Mr. Olympia, he does look amazing. Look at this guy. I mean, he's full, he's round, and he's very conditioned. He did not get chubby. He got big and full and he trains like a maniac. You can see that on his IG very often. His shoulders still do look suspicious, but he's training crazy and he looks good. He looks big and round. Uh, maybe the reason for his roundness is simple. Maybe not. Maybe it's just, you know, himself training hard and eating and uh, doing whatever. But he does look good right now at 24 weeks out. Uh, how he's going to do at the Mr. Olympia, we still have to wait and see. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank Thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.